started in the late 1970s by Jenny Thornton and it was a way to empower women. Our products go to 32 countries around the world and we have about 400 active customers. We have 781 women altogether. Collectively they earn about two and a half million rand per year. So Gonroll is about um, trade not aid. We work with powerful women that are doing it for themselves. We don't believe in handouts. Our women negotiate the prices that we pay so they currently earn about 47 to 52% of the wholesale price that we sell our products for. So everything we do here is driven by the women. We went to them and we asked them what their needs were. So all our social projects, our empowerment projects, all come from the needs of the communities that we work in. African women are incredible. They are strong, they are powerful, and they are what the community is built upon. So we go out there and we do what we can to assist them because they deserve it. The income generation side of Gonroll is about making craft. Our women work from home and it's a traditional skill they've had passed down through the generations. We buy the products every three weeks, we're at the groups. We take the products and we export, but we also have two retail stores within Swaziland. It's mainly tourists in Swaziland, but the rest of the world is home decor products. So we're preserving the techniques that are passed down from grandmother to mother and to daughter. And, um, you know, those techniques have been around for, for generations. And what that means at Gone Rural is really connecting, you know, the Swazi women and um, their craft and taking that and making it accessible to, you know, people in the West and tourists coming to visit Swaziland. What we're really passionate about is, you know, really showing people, you know, about those hand skills again and elevating craft. That's, that really involves empowering the women further. You know, at the moment we're, we talk about, you know, economic empowerment and, you know, we have the, the social programs, but it's also about creating leaders now within the community. And they're very humble and modest, you know, but they have this inner strength. They, they have their struggles, but they still, you know, have this amazing inner sort of peace and connection. Here we do product development where new things are being cre created. So, Maybe Phil or someone can come with ideas, we make new things, uh, we look for the, for how is it going to be like a seasonal or which maybe customers would like, colors would like, then we make it either it's a basket or it's what, anything that can be new to our customers, then we send them to our customers so they bring it back for an order, we just train all the ladies in our dating groups and it's good because the ladies are getting more orders to our, to the communities because we have started making new products so customers like it so it's very important. Then on our social side we have schools projects. We educated 343 children last year on full educational scholarships. Then we have clean water because water brings everything. Once you have water in a community everything can go from there. In 2006 we had to open an NGO because income generation is still extremely important because that's what grows and develops um, villages, mainly through education of children. So we started our NGO in 2006 to complement the income generation side with health and education programs. We do gardens, school fees, clinics and we have peer educators. Like me, I'm a peer educator. I teach people to how to grow vegetables in the community and how to keep them healthy and get healthy vegetables. So we use organic to make people to fight against HIV and be strong. Every day we're out in the mountains. So on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays we're out. Tuesdays the women actually come to us. So all the, all the projects come from the artisans. We have an artisan board um, and they brainstorm every year and they come up with you know, the programs that we run. This, this whole, uh, it was inquired by the community. It appeared uh, to them, it was their priority, as this, this, this area is a rainy area. Even in winter, they have too much rains, uh, and it's very cold. Uh, as you can see, the artisans are working outside. Most of them, they are now aging. 
affect the cold affects them so they need a shelter to work under yeah and then they make the request to Conrad then Conrad provided a sick fund and provided a building for them we place an order with them and then the following week they bring their order we buy it and the following week they come back they get another order what we say to our women is we go to them even if we don't have a single order we will order a certain amount of money with them every single time we visit them and we focus on from the business side, um, the strategies of the business, and also the project side. So, you know, what is the focus? And is it water? Is it school fees? You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, the women, we've built one community centre, and, you know, that's a home for them, you know, and, and, and that's something they're all wanting now as well, which is just kind of shows the sense of community also within a, the gone rural women outside of our central hub.